Hello and welcome back to Shakespeare. We are working on Richard III and today we get to hear from Buckingham in Act 3, Scene 1. Buckingham, the Duke of Buckingham is probably the closest thing that Richard has to an ally. He's actually a decent ally of Richard's at this point in the play. But before we get too far into him, yesterday we were in Act 2, Scene 2, and today we're in 3-1, and there's 2-3 and 2-4 still to deal with in the interim, so just some stuff that's happening and has happened. Uh, George, the Duke of Clarence, was killed while he was in the tower where he was sent by King Edward when Richard convinced Edward that somebody whose name starts with G was going to kill Edward, so George was sent to the tower. Uh, Richard then hired the assassins to kill him there. Um, Edward made everybody make up with each other, you know, forgive all past wrongs, all that sort of a thing. And then they and then they find out that George, Duke of Clarence, is dead. And then Edward kind of goes off into another room and dies off screen. And Edward's widow, Elizabeth, is very wary of all of this because her eldest son whose name is also Edward, and her second son's name is Richard because they were very creative when they named people back in those days. Um, her son Edward is now in line to become king, but he's not quite old enough to do that, so Richard would become, like the Richard about whom this play is written, would become regent to the young King Edward, and Elizabeth knows that Richard, Duke of Gloucester, really has no love for her family, so she's kind of in a panic and all of that sort of a thing. Meantime, Buckingham and Richard got everybody's agreement that a small train of people should go get young Prince Edward and bring him to London to prepare for his coronation and all that sort of thing, and that it should be a small group so that it doesn't pique anybody's curiosity or raise any alarms about potentially another war getting started and all that sort of thing. But Buckingham and Richard planted themselves in that group of people that were gonna go get young Prince Edward, so that during the during their travel, they would be able to take him away from Queen Elizabeth's family, and they they could like take possession of him, because you know Richard's the villain of this play, even though he's the star of the play. So Act Two, Scene Three, we get we get a little bit of a palate cleanser. We just get to check in with Citizens One, Two, and Three, and they're talking about is Richard dead? Yeah, Richard really or not is Richard. They're like, is King Edward actually dead? And yeah, King Edward's actually dead. And his son is so young. And maybe that's not good for him to take the throne when he's so young. But Henry VI was also really young when he was coronated. And that turned out fine. And blah, 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 all this sort of stuff. So it's just, it's a little, it's a little palate cleanser. So we can check in with people who aren't royal and see how all of this royal kerfluffle is affecting all of them. Act two, scene four. Whew. We have the Archbishop of York, the Duchess of York, Queen Elizabeth, Richard, the Duke of York, who is Queen Elizabeth's second son, um, and, and they're all chatting about things. And this young Richard, the Duke of York, is not a super fan of his uncle for who he's named. He makes some cracks about him and how he like grew so fast that he turned rotten and, and things like that. But then a messenger comes in and lets them know that Rivers and Gray and Vaughn have been arrested by Richard, older Richard, Duke of Gloucester, about whom this play was written, and taken to Pomfret. Rivers and Gray are Elizabeth's family, Vaughn just like another soldier that was in that train that went there. And the messenger doesn't know why they were arrested, we don't really know why they were arrested other than this is Richard staging his coup. So they all sort of start to freak out and the queen and young Richard decide that they're gonna go seek sanctuary so that they can be safe. And that's the act of two, scene four. So that brings us to today's scene, act three, scene one, where we have Buckingham, the young Prince Edward, who is about to be coronated and become king because his dad died, and Richard, about whom the play was written, they're all chatting because they've just gotten to London. They're like, welcome to London. And Edward's like, this is great, but I wish more of my uncles were here to greet me. And Richard's like, yeah, but they were shady characters. It's a good thing that they were arrested because they're no friends of yours. And Edward's like, hmm, I kind of think they were. And then the Lord Mayor comes in to say hello to Edward, and they're like, and where's Hastings, and where's my mom, and where's my brother, and all that sort of thing. And then a messenger comes in, um, not a messenger, sorry, Hastings finally shows up, and Hastings 
lets them know that the Queen and young Richard have sought sanctuary. And Buckingham is like, no, 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 that's not cool. That's like, why would they do that? You need to go get young Richard and bring him here. And the Cardinal is like, um, I'm not going to go and get somebody who has sought sanctuary and drag them out of a safe place, kicking and screaming. And Buckingham replies, you are too senseless, obstinate, my lord, too ceremonious and traditional. Weigh it but with the grossness of this age. You break not sanctuary in seizing him. The benefit thereof is always granted to those whose dealings have deserved the place and those who have the wit to claim the place. This prince hath neither claimed it nor deserved it, and therefore, in mine opinion, cannot have it. Then taking him from thence that is not there, you break no privilege nor charter there. <laughs> Oft I have heard of sanctuary men, but sanctuary children? Ne'er till now. So what he's saying is that the cardinal is being silly by not wanting to take Edward away from his sanctuary because sanctuary is granted to people who need it and request it. And Richard is too young to know to request it, nor does he actually need it. So since he hasn't asked for it and he doesn't need it and he doesn't deserve it, he can't have sought sanctuary, right? So that's the argument anyway that Buckingham is making in this little speech. And the Cardinal's like, you know, you actually changed my mind. Okay, I'll go get him. So he and Hastings go to get young Richard and bring him to where everybody else is. And uh, I think that's enough for today. Because we're gonna hear we're gonna hear some more from Buckingham in Act One scene er, Act Three, Scene One tomorrow. Um, as we as we get the younger generations of the family together. Because remember, when it comes to royal successions, like the king's eldest kid would get the throne before the king's next oldest brother. So in order for Richard, who was younger than Clarence and Edward, to become king, he has to get around all of Edward's children and all of Clarence's children in order for him to actually rightfully become king. So anyway, he's got a little way to go before he gets what he wants, and we will dig further into it tomorrow. I'll see you then. Mwah.